Today we are looking at a very interesting Oshinoko topic in which we find out that Ai Hoshino's fate was originally completely different from what we ended up getting. Now, there is absolutely no question about it when I say that Oshinoko is the biggest anime out there at the moment, and you could argue that it's also been the biggest anime of the year so far. Oshinoko really feels like a series that is doing something completely different from what we have gotten used to in an anime and manga series, and there are a number of reasons as to why it's captured the attention of so many fans. It's premise in that it sheds light on the darker side of the entertainment industry, the beautiful animation of the show, the way in which the story has a way of connecting you in one way or another, but I've got to say one of its strongest suits is in its cast of characters. And when I think of the rise in Oshinoko's popularity, it really all comes down to one character in particular, which is of course the idol Ai Hoshino. I blew up the internet when Oshinoko dropped its first 90 minute episode that covered the first volume of the manga and also way before that with all its PVs and promotional material. I really was the poster girl for the series, and in a lot of ways, she still is in a sense. There is something just so very special about Ai's character, you know, the way she looks, the way she carries herself in her speech and mannerisms, and of course, in the moments we had seen her in. But she was almost too perfect, and thus, she had to be taken back from the spotlight. So how do you take such a hugely popular character away from the main focus of the series without ruining what the fans love the most about her? Well, that is the exact issue that they faced when writing Oshinoko. In an interview with Live Door News back in 2021, with the writer of Oshinoko, Aka Akasaka, who we also know as the mastermind behind the huge hit series Kaguya Summer Love is War. He reveals that he actually didn't have any plans to kill off Ai Hoshino when he was penning the Idol series together. Now, we all know it, the climax of Volume 1, which is also the end of the anime's first colossal episode, had one of the biggest and most shocking twists in which I was fatally stabbed by an obsessed fan, which resulted in her dying in front of her twin children, Ruby and Aqua. It was a moment that was just so truly heartbreaking and one that a lot of fans still get upset about due to its well-executed shock factor. Now, scenes or moments like this can really be hit or miss if not done right. If the viewer works out what is going to happen, or if it is done in a way that is unbelievable, it takes the impact out of the moment and leaves you with an unsatisfying conclusion. The build-up to the moment has to be spot on as well, otherwise it can lose all of that shock factor it was intended to cause, and within that, it has to be done to the right character so that the audience feels that they are truly losing something special to them, which in Oshinoko's case is of course I. And it goes without saying, Oshinoko pulled this big shock moment off perfectly. It happened to a character that the audience felt such a strong connection to, and it really blew the series up even more. But was this always going to be Ai's fate in the story? Was this planned from the very beginning? In the Live Door News interview, Akasaka was asked if Ai's shocking and tragic death was something that was always intended when he was writing Oshinoko. Akasaka reveals that this wasn't always planned, and he answers the question by saying, Actually, this is an idea that was born during serialization. At first, it was planned that I and the children would be active in the entertainment world for quite a long time. But when I actually started drawing, I was too strong for a manga character. Now, I think that's really interesting, and you can really see what he means by what he said in that I was too strong a character. Ai Hoshino was written so very well, and just her image alone would have completely overshone each and every character that follows her in the series. Now, in order to keep the attention of the audience and keep the story fresh and interesting, I think other characters they designed or wrote would have had to have been made like to rival Ai or to better her character, and I honestly don't think that's possible. Like, in trying to do this, I feel like too much thought would have gone into these other characters to rival her popularity with the fan base, and they would have just ended up messy and would have ultimately missed the mark, causing the entire series to crumble. Unless everything was centered around I, which, as we got from Akasaka's answer, was not the case. Ruby and Aqua were intended to be a key focus on the story and the theme of Oshinoko as a whole. 
It's funny, almost, you know, in reading this interview and Akasaka's answer to this question, I instantly thought about the moment in Star Wars Revenge of the Sith. Bear with me here. The moment where Mace Windu tells Anakin that Palpatine is too strong to be kept alive. I just, I just feel like, I feel that this is probably just the exact same concept that they faced, you know, when they were talking about Ai's character when writing Oshinoko, you know, like, you know, bro, Ai's character, she's just too strong to be kept alive and thus what happened happened now looking back at this idea they once had in which i and the kids were going to be all active in the entertainment industry at the same time it's an interesting one but i honestly can't see that working with i's character although i do love aqua and ruby's characters they would have just been instantly shunned as soon as i was involved like even now we just get glimpses or mentions of i in the series now and then and i just feel like the mood intensifies whenever she's involved so to have kept her in that would have definitely taken the story of oshinoko in a completely different direction a possibility could have been if the series focused solely on i like her is the main character of the entire series would that have been the solution to this maybe but you don't know how that would have panned out I haven't read the manga, so I don't know Ruby and Aqua's story as in depth as I do right now with just the anime alone. But from where it's going, I really do enjoy the direction they have taken with it. And I, I think the story did need to progress without I, even though they had created one hell of a character. They're using her right though. If you think about it, recently in episode seven, when Akane imitated I for her character in Love Now, us fans went absolutely crazy for it. Yes, as fans of Akane's character in her brilliant arc, but I think it was the way in which we got to see a glimpse of Ai's character again, which I had mentioned earlier just had a completely different feel to it. An intense feeling almost that just demands the viewer's attention. And I think in creating a character as strong as Ai's and killing her off to use her sparingly throughout the show, it's to me a touch of genius and a really bold move because they could have easily had Ai as the main focus of this series. With Ai's death, there is also, of course, the revenge aspect thrown in there now as a result of this, which is easily another route they could have heavily focused on, but that hasn't taken center stage just yet, as the show is delivering on what it wants to be, which is how the entertainment industry affects different people. I just find it truly fascinating that they had created a character too powerful that they had to write out of the series, which in turn changed aspects of the series. But like, what, what do you think about it? Like, do you think the story would have benefited from I not meeting her tragic end? Or do you agree with their decision that she had to be written off? Do you maybe think that a series focused solely on I's experience would have been better than what we have now? Let me know. I'm super interested to hear your thoughts about this one in the comment section below. And while you wait for the next video to drop, why not check out this video where I talk about the true meaning behind Oshinoko's star eyes. But guys, that is it from me. I'll see you soon. Take care till then. Peace, peace.